Interesting there. I mean, you, you began speaking about the kind of systemic problems in South Africa that are by and large because of the apartheid government and its mm -hmm. system of, of, you know, prejudice based on race. And it's, it's something that's come up in the rhetoric of many of the different political parties, which is kind of a no-brainer if it's still so much a part of our society, even mm -hmm. after 20 years of, of ANC administration. Mm -hmm. But is there something problematic or uh, is it good politics to, to cite apartheid mm -hmm. and to use that in, in your political kind of you know, speeches and what have you? Or is it, is it bad politics? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm sure it's more nuanced than that, but yes. I've heard President Jacob Zuma, for example, saying, you know, if we look at history, the mm -hmm. DA is the spawn. Mm -hmm. It's a snake, you know, it's the spawn of the National Party and the Progs, the Progressive Party, and then you have Musi Maimani saying, well, the only person who seems to be nostalgic about apartheid is Zuma, and it really just is this mudslinging yeah. on this moot issue, which yeah. is, you know, apartheid. I think we have a pattern where political parties and political leaders, especially as it comes closer to the elections, they fall into particular roles. So you have the role of the incumbent, which is to defend its record, and to highlight its successes. And the role of the opposition is to attack. And we fall into this mode. Mm -hmm. And what's very interesting for me is that at national level, you've got the ANC in power and the DA primarily in opposition. So they take on this role. In the Western Cape, that role is reversed. So you've got the DA in power and the ANC in opposition. And it's almost a mirror image. Mm -hmm. What the DA is saying at national level, the ANC is saying at provincial. at provincial level. And it's so interesting, it's a role that they fall into that they can't seem to break out of. And linked to that role is this appeal, it's the negative campaigning, it's the mudslinging. Because as you get closer and closer to the election, it becomes harder and harder to refrain from doing that. It's like low-hanging fruit. Yes. You've just got to pluck it. The problem is, I think that it fuels the voters' dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it would mobilize your party loyalists. But for somebody who is looking and trying to say a young voter that doesn't have much information, looking at the parties and hearing the mudslinging, I don't think it's necessarily attractive. Mm -hmm. I think it m would more feed the disillusionment. And it also undermines the kind of rhetoric of what happens in Parliament, of, yes. excuse me, Parliament around non-racialism yes. and democracy and multicultural yes. South Africa. And it becomes a real kind of issue in terms of going, well, how, how separate is what we want to say to our voters yes. to get them into the pol polling stations to vote for us versus the spin or the kind of, you know, um, playing at democracy that yeah. we do in, in, in Parliament. And I think it's a very dangerous sort of yeah. split. Look, especially in the run-up to election, it is a bit of theatre. Mm. Um, and parties do revert to that. So if you know you're going to a particular area, you know the history of that area, the easier thing to do is appeal to the vulnerabilities and the emotions and the anger mm. in that community and make promises about what can be done. Um, unfortunately, you often hear from voters that that is what happens in the run-up to the election and then they don't see the party or leaders um, in between the elections. So for me, a better course is to say that this campaigning period should actually be the end of a productive inter-campaign period. Like a term, term. your term in office. So campaign. whether you are in power or not, mm -hmm. what are you doing during the term? There are many things that political parties not in power can do between elections. All political parties have the advantage of organization. And if you've got the advantage of organization, you've got branch structures, you've got people in different communities, you can mobilize people in the sense of, you know, if there's a natural disaster, we mobilize people. Mm. Why can't we mobilize people and mobilize social capital in a productive way yes. so that at the end of that term when you come to campaign you are reinforcing what you've put in place during the term 
you have that track record. Exactly. Yes. That is the basis mm -hmm. as opposed to coming in and saying you've been left behind, etc. You've been neglected by us and others. Exactly the point. Yeah. Interesting you say that because in the Western Cape with the ANC as the kind of, you know, secondary party that's sort of clawing its way and trying to gain an advantage, they've plugged into social groups and yeah. community-based active groups in yeah. order to try and strengthen, I think, mm -hmm. their contingent and their kind of voter yeah. population in the Western Cape. So it'll be interesting to see if that works for them.